Hey, party people, what's good? It is your boy, BQ. Welcome back to the channel. I don't typically review Impact before a TNA Plus show or a pay-per-view, but I did get a chance to watch it last night, so I woke up this morning and I said, hey, why not? Let's let's do this. Let's talk about it. I haven't watched Victory Road yet. I'll be watching Victory Road today. Uh, all that I know about it is that JBL was involved again and that uh, they hot-shotted the X Division title like I predicted they probably would. Uh, other than that, I'm, I have no idea what happened at the show. I would imagine there was multiple title changes, but we'll see. I saw pictures of the crowd. crowd looked incredible. San Antonio was a good market for them last time. I, I pointed it out that they did the, the brewery show. Uh, Tessa Blanchard was on the card, and I think it was the one where Rich Swan got hurt. They had a really good, really engaged crowd for that. So uh, it was really beautiful to see. The company has come a long way in a very short period of time as far as attendance goes. So when people are getting on social media saying, oh, well, this partnership with NXT isn't leading to viewership, like no one has freaking access TV number one. And there's no way to track that. If the I mean, I'm sure TNA has their metrics, but I mean, people could be signing up for TNA plus because of this uh, partnership with NXT. Uh, there's more social media chatter. You know, there's significantly more. Uh, there's a lot less LOL TNA going on. It's been very positive for the brand, but if you just notice with the with the attendance, attendance has been great at these shows. Uh, obviously, the can you know Louisville, Kentucky one is not the, one of their stronger markets, but you know it was fine. I thought the fans were a little quiet this episode. Last week, I said I thought they sounded fine. But this is the second half of a, a taping day. And, you know, you can get kind of tired, especially when you see the same wrestlers come out. So I always expect that. But, um, yeah, man, you know, they're, they're just doing they're doing good numbers with attendance. They, they've really come a long way because I put on Twitter yesterday. It seems like yesterday that they were afraid to travel because no one would go to the shows. The, a lot of the fans were afraid for them to travel. And uh, the first time they they did when they got back on the road was those stadium shows and and they they had decent crowds but stadiums you got to fill a stadium you know what I'm saying like if people are scattered out it looks like there's less people there than there are and of course you know pictures made their way on social media and then the first couple Twitch shows were in in you know high school gymnasiums and shit and those um, those pictures were going all over the place and, and you see one empty chair in a gym and people are like, Oh no one, you know, TNA is dying. They've come a long, long way. And we, including myself freaked out at the top of the year when Scott Demore was let go. Now I've learned, you know, more since then. And I've tried to pass that information on to you guys, but you see that the company is good. The company is healthy. Like the company is not, Scott Demore, we freaked out because we thought he was responsible for everything. He let us believe that. And that's clearly not the case because the company is um really thriving. But uh, what they did, you know, packing that that venue for Victory Road was was really awesome to see. It looked uh it looked great. I haven't seen the show yet, but I would imagine it looked very good and, and very professional. So we're gonna get into this episode. Uh Again, I don't normally do this before. I don't usually do the go home shows. Two reasons: it's a lot of wrestling for me to watch it, you know, at a time. And number two, I've never been a fan of TNA's go home shows. But the last couple have been okay. So I said, you know what? Let's let's watch it. Let's review it. Let's get into it, and uh, we'll do that one time for your mind. So, first match here. Um, I've got some I've got some thoughts. We had a new baby face, Steve Macklin. For the land of the free. Versus Alex. I like that name. Let's I had a better sound drop for Hammerstone. It got messed up. You guys I'll play it for you at a uh, victory road. <laughs> I don't know what the hell happened there. Uh, it's saved incorrectly. Um, 
this match here, the you know you, you know Tom Hannafin was first time ever matchups like this. This is like a legit first time ever matchup that would have been awesome for Bound for Glory. For just a go home, you know, justify this fucking tag team match type about. I wasn't feeling that. You could have had um, Eric Young wrestle Jake something. That would have made a little more sense to me. I mean, I know they wrestled last week, but or you could have. I'm, I'm should I should say Macklin could have wrestled Jake something because he was the one that came down and saved Eric Young last week. And then, you know what I'm saying? I think that would have made more sense. This is a really good matchup on paper, and it was a good match. I really enjoyed it. But to just throw this together, I mean, th- this this is just something I would have had at a bigger pay per view. Tom Hannafin could have busted his nuts. It's the first time ever matchup. You know what I'm saying? Oh, what a kick out! He, I, so that was just the first thing that stood out to me. But that being said, I, I just don't think you should waste good first time matchups. That's all I'm saying. But I I, I really enjoyed this. It's interesting to see Steve Macklin work from this babyface role. But it it was um, you know, I like guys with size. I, I talked about that sounds real gay, but I like I like I like to watch wrestlers with size. And this is just a kind of match that is up my alley. The finish looked like shit. And that was the second time they beat Hammerstone like this. Eric Young did it the first time at Slammiversary. Just this fucking bullshit roll up. After all these moves don't win the match, you know, a, a semi sloppy roll up ends up doing it. Hammerstone loses too much for my for my liking. I had said this a week or two ago. This guy should be at the top of the card of this company. I don't understand why he's not there. I would have began ele- elevating him very very early on for his eventual world title run i have to believe that one day probably 2025 maybe even 26 maybe it's even out in the future even further that this dude is the tna world champion he just has to be but i don't think they're laying the groundwork properly he he feels like um i mean he was in the x division match you know what i'm saying i'm gonna start I'm going to start calling him the X Division's own Hammerstone. And we'll throw Jake something in there too. X Division superstars. So I would just like to see Hammerstone. Like he, they're 50 50 booking him. I think that's the best way that I can describe it. Whether it's Josh Alexander, Eric Young, probably in this case, we'll see what happens at Victory Road. It's very like 50 50. He gets a week, one, he gets a win one week, loses the next, and there's just like no momentum whatsoever i've said this before i would have put him over josh alexander when they wrestled uh, a a couple months ago and really freaking built the heat on this guy but um i just thought i thought the match was kind of i mean the the finish was kind of crap but i did enjoy the the match for uh for what it was so um you know after the match jake something comes down because Eric Young comes to help, and you, you knew this was coming. You saw this a mile away, exactly how the what was going to happen at the end of the match. Jake something and Hammerstone stare at each other because remember they almost had a feud at the top of the year, but then I believe Hammerstone got hurt. I think there was something else going on with Hammerstone as well. That's why I thought he was actually released from his contract for a second. I think there was something else going on as well, but you know he is back on track. He's with the company again. We're seeing him on TV on a regular basis. And it looks like they're going to pair these guys up. If Hammerstone and Jake something remain as a team and Eric Young and Steve Macklin remain as a team, like you have really beefed up this tag team division because they're not fighting for anything as singles. Whether they fight a digital media championship, there's nothing for them. Okay. So you might as well kind of keep them paired up and they don't have to be wrestling for the titles and winning the titles right away but you know you can have a nice beefy tag team division more ways than one these are these are big guys so uh, that's what i would do i kind of keep them together 
as teams, but uh, enjoy the opener. They did a, a backstage vignette with the system. And I've told you guys, I don't like these. I don't like the way they shoot them. I don't like the cameras up their nostrils. They're not saying anything. I haven't, en- like, I love the system. Their, their promos fucking suck. I expect them to be better. I expect, like, there was one um, one that they did several months ago. And it was really highly praised. Where, they st- you know, Moose started going down the accolades of everyone. And that's when people started kind of getting with, okay, well, doesn't have accolades. She needs something, you know. But I remember they did one video that was really, really good. And they they kind of go back to that stuff a little bit. But they're not saying anything to me. I don't I don't think these are good. And maybe it's just the way that they're shot. I, I don't know I, I don't know why these like cutouts and close ups, why someone thinks that looks good. I just I just don't. Maybe you maybe you guys don't give a shit, but I don't I don't think it looks good at all. I did kind of laugh during this because Moose is sitting here, you know, Brian Myers, you know, you're gonna win a tag team championship. Eddie Edwards, your title. Alicia, your queen of the knockouts. JDC, you're a loose cannon. So for my old school hip hop heads, if, you, if you've listened to the first Wu Tang album, Method Man has this this uh, interlude where he's just running down all the members and he's just giving them all these, you know, he's a this and this and blah 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 blah, and then he gets a you got it and he goes and baby Yui, he's a psychopathic thinker, and then he just moves on to the next person. That's kind of what it reminded me of. So it just said, it just made me laugh. Then it shows Steve Young. Steve Young. Can you believe I said Steve Young? Mike Gilbert's going to like that. Steve Macklin uh, is backstage furious with Eric Young. And they have uh, issued a, uh, a challenge to Jake something and Hammerstone for Victory Road. So we, we knew that were, they, we knew they were going that direction. But they did a pretty good job of kind of throwing that little mini feud together pretty quick. Oh, and I kick out. After that, we got the debut of Heather Reckless. He has an erection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all her fault. He has an erection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all her fault. I had to play that one twice for you. Uh, she took on Giselle Shaw. I thought... Heather Reckless looked very good. She's good. She is fucking good. I wasn't sure what I was going to expect out of this match. The gorilla press by Giselle Shaw was pretty impressive. <laughs> uh, I wasn't sure what to expect because obviously there's a big height difference between the two. We knew that this was Giselle Shaw's last match and needed, you know, she needed to put someone over on the way out. And I thought it was a really good debut for Heather Reckless. She's she's very very good. That that um Spanish fly finisher that she hits, I think she calls it wrecked. She call it wreck shop. That was pretty impressive. Um, I don't know how often she's gonna be able to pull that off versus some of the other girls. That's a pretty difficult move. I think she's gonna need something else. But she hit it very clean and she's she's really good. She's I, I'm sure most of you guys can can agree with that assessment. She just she looked excellent in this match, and she was a great find for the knockouts division. And I'm uh, very glad that they brought her on board. And we will talk a little bit more about Heather Reckless here in a little bit. Uh, personal concierge and Ash by Elegance came down and obviously made the made the distraction. And this this played out pretty much how I expected it to. Uh, I talked about it last week, but yeah, Heather Heather Reckless gets the win. And then they do another coming soon for the, the the Chinese knockout. I don't remember her name. Like I said, I'm not super familiar with her. So, uh, but I, I'm I've heard she's pretty good. Rather than giving knockouts concussions, but we already have knockouts getting concussions, so I guess they're not too concerned about that. Matt Cardona was in the ring, and he came out with. Steph Double D Lander. Everybody's been real nice. Well, that's because you have big jugs. 
And I, I'm not really digging this. I have a contract. I own you type of shit. You can hire someone. Someone can be your, your client, but you don't, you don't own them 24 seven. That's, that's not really how that works. And we're supposed to believe that Steph Delander signed a contract of like, she was not brought to the United States from Cuba. You know what I'm saying? Like she came from Australia. She can make it here on her own accord. And Matt Cardone is acting like he's going to deport her. Like he's sending her back to Mexico. You know what I'm saying? Like what? If you don't, if you don't follow what I say, I'm sending you back to Australia. Well, come on. So this is this is really silly. This I, I was very open minded to everything in the very beginning with this, and now I'm not I'm not really feeling it. I know that it's just gonna lead to Monsters Ball. I think they're gonna find a way to put the title on Cardona, which I, I would prefer over PCO. This fucking title means nothing on PCO. It means absolutely nothing. Like AJ Francis was doing some shit with it. So, you know, get the belts on Cardona. I say the belts because he's he's got two, that North American or whatever in the world he calls it. But I, I, I am not feeling this. He said that he talked to Santino and that he was able to choose his tag team partner at, Vic, uh, at Victory Road versus PCO and the convenient store machine, Rhino. And he chose Steph Delander. So I don't know how this is going to fucking play out when I watch Victory Road later. I would imagine it's going to be the worst thing on the card. There's there's no way that it's not. And uh, then, of course, after that, we get PCO's music and we get PCO. Sounds like Bigfoot's dick. And he comes out and he lays out Matt Cardona. And, and this is what I w- I've been saying, too. With the exception of Matt Cardona attacking him on the honeymoon it's been pco the entire time pco gets the upper hand whether it's versus cardona versus his monsters like where is the heat in all this the heat is supposed to be that he's got steph the lander under contract i'm not digging it not feeling it uh it's it's a clear out because i've been wondering what's the out that's going to divorce these guys these two on the screen get an annulment what is the out well i guess matt cardona can do it most likely they're going to I mean, I, I'm going to assume Cardona and PCO when they have their match. If Cardona wins, that the, they have to get divorced. I would imagine it's going somewhere like that. This is just not, not very good. And just because I know, like, I can't be open minded anymore because I just know it's going to Monsters Ball or something like that. I just, it, you, you know what I mean? What, what? Uh, that's just what it. That's where it goes with PCO. So you can just. You can just see the stuff from a mile away a lot of the time. Maybe they're going to surprise me, but I'm just, I'm not expecting a lot from this. I'm not, I'm not enjoying it very much at all. And then backstage, we have Spitfire. Tell me right now that I'm just a job. Tell me to my face. You're just a job. And they, their promos are so funny because they're always so pissed off or (laughs) like, it, we're going from week to week. You know, I've I've blown off more steam in 15 minutes than than these girls do sometimes. But they're discussing this do or die thing where they have to split up if they don't win the titles. I mean, this is a yeah, I, I'm gonna say it again. It is a storyline. It's a storyline they've been building for quite some time. I don't particularly enjoy it, but it is a storyline, and we don't get that with the knockouts tag team titles. It just kind of sucks that it's for them because they're one of the least interesting tag teams we've had. And again, it's it's. I'm not saying they don't have their fans. I just don't see how the, they're just not interesting to me as the tag team champions. I would imagine when I watch this victory road later today that they win the titles back. And I know Alicia is not wrestling. I, I would imagine they're going to win. We'll see. We'll we'll see what happens, but I'm I'm pretty sure. Um, and then uh, as they're talking here, Gia Miller happens to walk up. Jesus Christ, that's perfect. Of course you're here right now. 
And then she uh she talks him. This is her only like interview of the show. I don't believe she interviewed anybody backstage. Then we got first class versus ABC in a tornado match. I guess I didn't like this episode that much, folks. <laughs> Cause I did not I like the opening match quite a no, you know what? No. I like the opening match. I like the knockouts matches. I didn't I didn't like that Matt Cardona segment, but if, no, for the most part, the, the wrestling was fine. I did not like this. I am not into this new version of first class. I also try to be open-minded with that. I'm just a big... And you just can't replace him with someone who's never won a match on the show and then act like he's important all of a sudden. It's like they have chemistry, but they don't at the same time. You know, it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb, but it's also not first class now. From I looked at AJ Francis and Rich Swan, like okay, they're future tag team champions. Now I just look at them as guys who look at them as guys who I don't want to call it jobbers, but they lose matches. I don't see them as the champions in this iteration. I'm not. I'm really not into it. And, and it's nothing against Casey Navarro because he's talented and. He's wrestled on the show before, and people get on Twitter and say, sign Casey Navarro. I think he'd be fine for the X Division, but he's just like randomly thrown into this, and we're supposed to care. I, I'm like, I'm not into it. Like, I was not invested in in, uh, in this first class match. And usually I am when they wrestle. It's one of my favorite parts of the show when they come on. And it was a tornado tag team match, which means it's just chaos. Like, Tom Hannafin would say, it's Bedlam, it's Mayhem. Oh, and I can't count. So th- I, I didn't really enjoy this. And then Steve Francis. Steve Francis, what is wrong with me today? Steve Young, Steve Francis. AJ Francis takes the pin here. Not Casey Navarro. AJ Francis. I, I don't. I don't even understand how we can take first class seriously now. They've lost twice to ABC. They've been both guys have been pinned. Like this feud is over. You cannot justify throwing these two back in the tag team title picture. So I, I'm not into it. That's back to back things here that I've uh, I have not been very very into. I don't know why it had to be a tag team tornado match. I I mean, whatever. Just I didn't think it was it was very good at all. Then Joe Hendry enters the ring. He calls out Josh Alexander. Josh Alexander, who didn't know he was getting called out, was able to get to the uh, the balcony there within seconds. And he says, I'm not coming down there. And at first I was ready to be like, this is going to be boring. And then Joe Hendry did what we love when Joe Hendry does. And he made a song about Josh Alexander, the Josh Alexander story. And I thought he killed it. I thought it was like going a decent direction. Is you know the whole why doesn't he ever smile? It's it's a little cheesy, but it, it worked. He, you know, he's always and all of, all his pictures. So it it was kind of funny. But at the end with the Kurt Angle from Wish, like that's where he nailed it. And then he just he knows how to just play into the crowd and just keep repeating that part. And the crowd is singing it. This was very entertaining. I've been missing this from Joe Hendry because this is one of the things that got him over. You know, now that he's been so over, he just shows up and talks and wrestles. And I've been getting a little bit bored with it. So he, they, they kind of reel this back into what, you know, what he does, what, what, what he's good at. So I thought it was really funny. And it was real convenient that uh, there was the, the sign in the crowd to where Joe Hendry's like, I saw a sign in the crowd earlier that said walking wiener and then everyone's chanting it. Amazing. This was, I don't want to compare Joe Hendry to the rock, but the rock was always able to have the crowd in the palm of his hands. He would have them chanting whatever he wanted. And, you know, it would lead to chants that got some heat on his opponents too. You know what I mean? So, I thought this was uh, really good for both people involved. The sign was really convenient, but Joe Hendry played it in great. I I was into it. After that, Jordan Grace confronted Ariana Grace backstage, 
saying that her and um, Hot Pants, what's her name, Carmen Petrovich, were welcome to TNA, but that Wendy Chu was not. They, <laughs> she, she said, Wendy Chu's not here. Is like, who else has uses a pillow? And she said, the Sandman. Like, Ariana Grace has no clue who the Sandman is. But they, when I was doing my little preview show, I was saying they actually did a pretty decent job of throwing this match together in in a couple weeks. When you got NXT and TNA to work with, and Rosemary's going back and forth too, like they they were able to throw this Wendy Chu Jordan Grace thing together pretty quickly, and 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 people were engaged in it too, you know. So I thought they did, a, did excuse me, I thought they did a good job with that. Then they got Santana on screen. He's always cutting promos. I'm sure he he signed a very friendly deal where he doesn't have to wrestle a lot of dates. But they always get him on the show in one way or another. And he's saying that he really hopes Moose wins that title so he can take the, the belt off him. So uh, very good. Santana talking is always, is always very good. And then um, after that, we got a match that maybe some of you guys didn't like, but uh, I was digging it. It was uh, Ash by Elegance, accompanied by the personnel concierge. That's my dad, but don't worry, he's cool. Really? <laughs> he doesn't look cool. And he, t- she took on Queen of the Rubber Match, <laughs> Zaya Brookside. And I thought this this match was fine. Um, I, I mean, I like both girls. I really like Zaya Brookside a lot. So I, I thought the match was fine. Telegraph and Tom was talking about, you know, I call her queen of the rubber match. She's like, you know, Ash holds a 2-1 advantage versus Zaya Brookside. I mean, this is their fourth match this year. She now holds a 3-1 advantage uh, because she won this match with the the interference from Heather Reckless. And I called this last week, you know, I give a lot of predictions that are wrong as fuck. I called this last week that when they were on screen together, I said, I see it. I see her uh, pairing up with Ash, like kind of being her mini me. I hate that term, but kind of being her mini me. Because I was saying that Ash has already wrestled for the title twice. Like she needs something different. She can't just do the same shtick. So they have to, they have to give her something else to freshen up the character and I was saying adding Heather Reckless as a you know little lackey will freshen that up. And that's looks like exactly where they're going. So um I definitely nailed that one. I when when they were showing it last week on screen with Giselle Shaw and they had their little run in and all that, I just saw it. Like when she was next to each other, they both had black on, I believe. I could just see it. I was like, they're they're gonna they're gonna team them up. So I'm looking forward to that. Zaya Brookside did an octopus submission during this match and that was one of the things that got aj lee over as a as a small wrestler once upon a time that octopus i would love to see zaya brookside really use that as a as a finisher where she's winning matches because i think that could be uh very beneficial for her in both of these knockouts matches there were moments where Tom Hannafin spoke in his normal voice. If you go back to the ver- the very first match, there was a there was a period of about a thirty seconds to a minute just talking normal, and then he got he turned into fake Tom really quick. And then he did the same for this match where he was running down the upcoming dates, like they were scrolling at the bottom of the screen. We know we're going to South Carolina, North Carolina, whatever the fuck, and he's speaking in his normal voice. And then all of a sudden, rah, like he just turned to fake Tom immediately. It was crazy. But if you go back and watch those, you'll see what I'm talking about, where when he speaks in his normal voice, he sounds significantly better. There was a, there was um, I kind of glanced over, but they did a Jonathan Gresham kind of video package thing where they're trying to play that he's having mental health issues because he doesn't know if he's the octopus or what they're, they're trying here. I think they pulled the plug on this gimmick and they're they're trying. And it had some potential because he's someone you gotta find you gotta find a way to throw some personality into that gimmick. You know what I mean? So the mask worked and they just 
they really kind of fucked it up with the ink. Otherwise, they they would have stayed away from the ink. They would have had a, a a real winner with that one. Main event was the Hardys versus the System. This was a good main event. We knew that the Hardys were going to win. They won. The Hardys always kind of wrestle the same type of match, but it works. You know, I talked about Joe Hendry earlier. That the Hardys have the crowd in the palm of their hands. Um, it they work in this company. You know, you kind of put them on a bigger stage, a bunch of other teams. It doesn't really click, but in this here, this environment for TNA, they it works for them. They, uh, you know, they have matches and people are into them and the matches are good. They're fun. And the system, they've booked the system pretty well because whenever they lose, it's it's not 50-50. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's more of a 67-33. You know, they'll always win a couple matches before they lose. So it never feels like, oh, they're burying the system. Like kind of like Honor No More when they came out, like they were just losing all the time. You know, they won the first couple of matches and then PCO was the only one winning and everyone else was just losing all the time. And it just got kind of stupid. Well, the system, they do lose, but it's not so often that you're like, oh, they're they're burying the system. I mean, they get they get wins. You know, they got back to back wins over Santana and Joe Hendry. And I know one was an eight man tag, one was a tag match but i mean they they win matches so i think they booked the system very well very well i'm very interested to see how they uh handle them at victory row like who's gonna get titles back i don't believe moose won i would have put the title on him personally but i don't think he won but i i have a feeling eddie and brian myers probably won and i'm pretty sure alicia i think she was replaced by they probably lost but I'm going to watch Victory Road here in a little bit. So that's it. I uh, ran. <coughs> oh, there's always a cough every episode, right? Uh, I ran through this a little quicker than I normally review a show. The show was pretty decent, and we will see what happens with Victory Road. I will talk to you then. Peace.